Okay, welcome everyone to Professional Perspectives with Anita, Vicky, Salishma, and today our guest is Juan Garza. And I'm not going to read his little bio that's in the flyer for his introduction. I'm just going to speak about him because um, I have known Juan now for a couple of years. He was, can I tell Juan? Absolutely, yeah. He was one of my English students. I was a private tutor for him when he uh, left Mexico and moved with his wife to Dubai. But I, I need to say why or why they moved because there's something very special about Juan because he reminds me about something very special about my husband. A couple of years ago, he left his job, his professional job, and allowed his wife to pursue her career and her job being transferred with her company to Dubai. And at the time, of course, he didn't know what was going to happen with his job, his career, but he gave it up for um, Monica, his wife, and um, and then uh, worked on his English. We worked on his resume and all kinds of things, his interview skills, and had a wonderful time. And I'm going to, of course, let him tell you the rest of what he's doing now and what he has done in the past. But I just respect this man so much uh, oh, for, for all that he's done in his own career, but also what he did for his wife and uh, their relationship and career and seeing the world and all those things. So Juan, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. And we, uh, Anita and I are going to ask some questions then as usual, we'll open it up for our audience to also ask you questions. Let me just say a quick word to my Indian friends and colleagues, happy, joyful, blessed Independence Day to all of you. It's a great accomplishment, 75 years, and it's been uh, well celebrated. I'm sure that that's, people are still celebrating, but congratulations uh, to, uh, to all of you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to uh, do a little spotlighting and allow Anita to ask our first question. Thank you, yes. Welcome, Juan, to our. Thank you so much, Anita, and um, and by the way, thank you so much, Vicky, for the uh, for the introduction. More than I deserve. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Well, it is actually a delight, indeed, truly a delight to have you over. Um, I was wondering, uh, this is also a rather new field that you are in. So, uh, how did that strike you to get into this field? Is it part of what you studied or? you had a passion for it or how did you go about it? Well, uh, thank you very much for the question, Anita. Actually, my background is supply chain and uh, uh, mostly operations, uh, logistics, supply, I see it, foreign trade. And uh, I found that when I arrived in Dubai, I found that that's a huge industry here. Uh, and, and let me tell you something. One of the, uh, the uh, I would say, um, people uh, working here, uh, uh, a huge amount of people, I would say, working here in Dubai uh, on supply chain, I'm from India. And I have to say, they are very good. Actually, my current boss is Indian, okay? So uh, first of all, I, I need to say that I have a, a huge respect from the Indian culture, uh, you guys are very clever. <laughs> I have to say, uh, discipline, clever, uh, resilient. So, so well, that's what I found. But uh, very soon, uh, that was last year, I found that also the market, the job market here, um, there was a lot of competition because Dubai is a special place in terms of of, of uh, employment. Uh, here, when a company opens a position, there's no only local people trying to apply for the job. 
there is thousands of people applying outside from Dubai because everybody wants to come to Dubai in Dubai and, uh, and work here for the advantages you have. So it is very hard to, to, to get a job. Uh, I was very lucky because the company that I'm, I'm working now, uh, they hired me because my my background, okay? Because they, they it's a digital company, it's a digital logistics company. And uh, I found that very interesting. And that answers the second part of your question because I, let's say, moved in some way from the supply chain uh, arena to the digital supply chain arena, wow. okay? And uh, I moved, from being, let's say, a user, a supply chain user to a supply uh, chain supplier or vendor, because now I'm working in a company that provides services to the kind of companies I was used to, to work for. Wow. Can you tell us a little bit more about the company you're working for now? Yes, the company uh, is owned by a very, very clever Indian man. He's my boss, actually. Uh, and uh, he found this opportunity about two or three years ago. I'm, I'm, uh, the opportunity is the digital need of uh, logistics in Dubai. So he moved from the US uh, in Dubai and established a company. So uh, he was looking last year for people uh, for a lot of help in, in, many, in many ways. And uh, uh, of course, the development area is in India because the best coders are there, <laughs> I have to say. And uh, also part of, of the companies in the UK uh, with two very successful products. So the idea was to bring those two products with the support that we have in India in Dubai. That, that, that's the mindset. Uh, at that point, they were very good uh, handling all the IT issues, you know, uh, coding and uh, programming and storage, all everything you need to know about, about IT. Uh, but the supply chain uh, environment is very different because there are needs, different sizes of companies, and you need to understand all that focusing specifically on, on the kind of company. For example, I used to work a lot in, in industrial companies, you know, companies with factories, with production. And uh, Route Magic, my, my current company, we are focused on small and medium businesses, not necessarily with manufacturing, but uh, delivering. There, there's a huge delivery industry here. So Route Magic helps these kind of companies to control and improve uh, route management and uh, efficiency. That's basically what we do. Wow. Now, this was like not part of your career plan when you started off in business no. college. And so uh, I would like for you to tell, I know a little bit about it, but could you tell, uh, especially these, um, the, the, the audience, or, or especially the young people, when you quit your job, how did you refocus? How did you, did you study things? Did you network? What did you do to, especially with the job market not being so good, what did you do to try to get another job? Okay, the first thing it's, uh, if, if you will quit your job, uh, it, it can be, uh, let's, what, what we say in Mexico, a decision made with the stomach, you know? needs to be a decision made with your head. Meaning that the stomach things mean don't take your emotions. It's, it's not an emotional, that's, that's what I, it's not an emotional decision, it needs to be uh, a rational decision. Then you need to be prepared for hard time. If you will quit your job for any reason, or you will look for a job, it's always hard. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't remember anyone not having a hard time looking for a job, okay? Now, that means that you need to be prepared mentally. Then... Oh, sorry. No problem. Go ahead. Then you need to... Uh, once you, 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 you're you out and you need to, to go for the next thing, in my case, uh, the, Dubai, the Dubai job market was completely uh, new. 
Okay. So first thing is, is be prepared for a hard time. Second point is try to understand quickly where you are and what the market needs, the job market, I mean. Okay. And that's also a hard decision because it is very likely that you will find that the job market is not necessarily offering what you are looking for. Oh, okay. And now, and now if, if, uh, if you realize that quickly, the process will be not so hard. Okay. As long as it takes for you to understand that it is not what you want to do. It is what the market is offering and needs okay that's for me that was the secret i know and there's young people here uh you always look for your dreams and you always uh, in terms of jobs everybody wants the dream job there's no dream job i i don't know there's no dream job there there will be always something okay and uh, I would not say that you need to look for happiness in your job. I think you need to look for satisfaction, okay? Because millennials and, and people from other very respectful generations, they are always looking for happiness. And uh, I would say that it is, it is fair to look for, your, um, for, for happiness in your personal life. But in your work life, you need to look for satisfaction and success. Satisfaction is in a way happiness, but it's, it's, it's also more things, okay? So uh, that said, I realized that maybe I would not find my, my dream job quickly and easily and maybe never, but there were other opportunities. So the third thing is, okay, now I know, I know, first thing, I know that I'm having a hard time. Second, I know that I need to understand what the market needs and is offering. And third, how much I, I am willing to change and, and also take advantage of what I, from what I already know and then apply it to this. And uh, I would say those three points were, were, were my, my, my steps to do it, okay? Uh, we need to take into account that, of course, I was looking for a senior position, okay? And, and a senior, in seniority, as, as, as up you are in the company, less spaces, of course. So you need to also understand that, but also understand that in, in, in companies are looking for a lot of help. So don't be afraid not to work on what you are on your dream, try to adapt what is available to what you are looking for, and then you will find a way. So how did That's you do that adaptation? Saying. That's my big question, because you're, you, you had to adapt a lot, right? From some okay. from your old supply chain experience to this new digital world. Yeah, well, I would answer that with this myth, a long-term mindset, okay? This job now is, let's say, 50 or 60% what I would like to have or what I would like to, uh, to learn will give me the money that I need because we all work for money. That's why I don't, uh, I'm not a believer of that, that you need to look for happiness. It's satisfaction and money, of course, but first satisfaction not money. Then how I did it, well, first I, I did a personal assessment. I, I, I saw the, the, the first I, I understood, I, I did my best to understand what was expected from me. When they offered me to, to get into the company and uh, help them um, with my supply chain um, background and, uh, and uh, try to translate from the customer's uh, needs to what the, the IT part could do. Uh, I understood, my first is the understanding on, 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 on the job requirement. That's very important. 
if you comply with what they are expecting from you, the next thing is really, really just to understand and develop. Once that I understood that their need was to have a supply chain background, I started to make myself useful. That's the adaptation. Okay. Of course, that requires more energy than a normal job with, with your, your current experience, because this is all about doing your job, but also trying to see what else is necessary. And if you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, give to the job and, and give to the company more things than expected using your other experience, and I was very lucky because I found many things to help them in, in, in areas also new for me, like marketing or like uh, uh, GCC, uh, you mean the, the Arabian, uh, I mean the Arabian uh, countries, GCC logistics, also the logistics and, and, um, and foreign trade here for me was new. I was an expert in Mexican and US logistics, but not in Arabia, okay? So uh, I would say is, is the, 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 the clue for the adaptation process is try to find what else you can do. So the company will start giving you different responsibilities, new responsibilities. Now, if you are useful for that means that you have either the willing to learn or you already have experience. So the job will start all your functions, your responsibilities, slowly will start looking like what you, are, you were looking for in the beginning. The clue is patience also, because that will not happen in the first, second, third week, maybe not in the second or, or the third uh, month, okay? And also the company, the employer needs to trust you, need to see what you're doing, but also Remember, that's in parallel to your current and uh, let's say formal job inside the company, okay? So it, in a way, it's like being an entrepreneur inside the company. Of course, following the rules, not being a rebel or, you know, the, 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 this genius type of, no, 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 no. It's just observing and then proposing and then if that moves on, take the responsibility because new responsibilities will come. That will ensure your stay in the company, but also that they need you. A job is all about what a company needs from you. They don't care about your happiness, your satisfaction. They don't care. They just care about what you are able to give to the company. I'm sorry if... Uh, this is not what you were expecting to hear, but it's the truth. Now, that said, if, if, if the company finds in you what they need or maybe more, they will love you yes. endlessly. True, very true. So what- I don't know if I answer the question. Yes, you did beautifully so. Vicky, what do you say? No, no, go ahead, Anita. Uh, so let's say I'm new to this word, uh, supply chain logistics. Could you help us understand as a lay person what exactly it involves? The supply chain actually, uh, what we do is move one thing from point A to point B and everything that happens in between, okay? Maybe, so we actually move things around countries around the world. And uh, I, I always think in supply chain, like the medicine school, there is no doctor that knows everything. Doctors, uh, I mean, you know, uh, medical, is that correct, Vicky? Uh, uh, medical not PhD, I mean, I mean the health professionals. Yes, we still call them um, doctors, medical doctors. Okay. You Medical doctors, for me, it's a, it's a very good analogy with supply chain. Medical doctors, they study a base, a base of knowledge for let's say five or seven years. 
Then they practice for like two years and then they decide to go for a speciality, okay? Yes. Supply chain is exactly the same. You need to, to, to move around for five or six years in all the areas of supply chain. I would say it's procurement, logistics, warehousing, manufacturing, uh, foreign trade, uh, those maybe five or six. Uh, one year, two years per, per each is, is for me the better with practice. And then after five or six years, choose one of those areas. For example, oh. for many years, uh, my, my, uh, my favorite was procurement. But uh, then in, in, in uh, and then of course I stay in procurement like for five years. And then I would say that inside supply chain, I was looking for another thing. So I moved to logistics. Then I moved to manufacturing as a specializations. Okay. So for supply chain, what I would say is if, if somebody likes start for, for, uh, for one area, maybe the, the, uh, uh, you will not like it so much in, in the beginning, but that area will take you to another area in supply chain and then to another area because all, all are, 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 are very related, okay? Go ahead. That would be it. And then, yeah, and then uh, after five, six, seven years, choose one and then stay for five years and then choose another one and then choose another one. And then do a crazy thing after 25 years and change to another <laughs> like me. <laughs> but it does, it does seem to me that that uh, could keep you motivated and interested, you know, because you're, you, you're, you're doing the same thing, but then you, you realize, okay, now I can go into this field and I can learn some other things and meet other people. Uh, would you agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. Once, some years ago, I was on a, on a job interview in Mexico. Actually, later they told me that because this answer, uh, I got the job. Somebody asked me, uh, what is your passion in supply chain? Why supply chain? Uh -huh. And my answer was, when I'm working in supply chain and we have a challenge because it's a very challenging job. For example, find something being in Mexico, find something in China or in India, then figure out how to talk with the supplier, put it on a truck, then put it on a boat, clear customs, make all the, the way to Mexico on the sea, then receive it in Mexico or in the US, clear customs, move a truck. And after all that thing, figure out and then plan and then execute. And then one day, you will see the goods entering on the warehouse to the factory. That gives me a lot of satisfaction. I don't know if it's, you know, but, but the, the, the fact of thinking in something a month ago or so that, that was produced in India, let's say, which is because India and Mexico are almost on, the, on opposite sides of the world. So India is challenging being in Mexico, okay? In terms of distance and, and time zone and everything. And then after a month or two weeks or whatever, see the goods or, or, or whatever you were moving, entering the factory gives me satisfaction and I would say joyfulness. And uh, I got the job. <laughs> so, but your degree is not in supply chain, right? Your degree is in business. Yes. <laughs> so how, uh, do, I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen a degree in a master's degree in supply chain. So how does that work? Well, the, 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 there are a lot of, uh, of uh, bachelor's degree now in supply chain. Oh. Um, most of them are engineers and of course, master's, uh, you know, uh, um, master degrees also in supply chain. In my case, I studied uh, business administration because I like companies. So uh, businesses for me, uh, business administration for me makes sense. It's a very general career as uh, let's say finance or accountancy or maybe engineering. 
that gives you the opportunity, at least in Mexico and in the Western, to move into a lot of functions, okay? And to be very honest, I, by any chance, I was thinking in, in uh, supply chain. I was thinking more maybe in finance or maybe in other, in other areas in a company, but uh, I started in supply chain in, the fir in my first day of uh, work life. On the very first day, I remember it was January the 3rd, 1996. I remember perfectly the day. And it was an accident because uh, I was doing practices and internships in a company. It was uh, a nice company. And then I graduated on December, 1995. And then they hired me for three months because I was doing internship. And then uh, I, it was a, a, a Monday or Tuesday. And, and the past week, a lady on supply chain resigned. So they didn't have anyone there. So, okay, I remember perfectly the, the guy that was later my boss. Do we have, uh, I, I don't remember her name, Mercedes or something. Is she back or she will not? She's not back. Okay, send him to, it was procurement. Send him to procurement. And that was my start. Then the lady, it was also a lady in foreign trade. Uh, she didn't like me in the beginning, by the way. But uh, uh, after three or four months, um, at that time, uh, when at the time when I uh, was hired, uh, she was pregnant. So two or three or four months later, she left for maternity leave. So I took her job. I, and he hated me more. <laughs> <laughs> because uh yeah but when she got back and i gave her job back but in the meantime during three months i'd learned foreign trade uh we're still friends since now since then 25 years later but uh, then so so in in a year i was doing procurement then covering a maternity leave with foreign train then getting back procurement with more responsibility than uh the warehouse Everything in that first year, to be honest, was uh, an accident, a happy accident, I would say. Right, right place at the right time. Right. And then, uh, and of course, I was 23 years old. You can work 80 hours a week, <laughs> stay late. So uh, I was working very hard. And uh, I stay on, on that job until they close the company two years later. Oh. Uh, well, we have, I have to bring in an element that is very important to us at the SJC Language Center, and that is language. So you were in Mexico. You got your degree okay. in Mexico. You were working for the big uh, different companies and the big company when you left there. Um, tell us what role language played, how important uh, did you, I mean, uh, obviously you speak Spanish and English. I don't know if you speak any other languages. Okay, so how important was English and how did you learn it and, and how did you have to keep learning it or improving it? Well, uh, in Mexico, you start learning English in elementary school, of course, and then uh, and then it's always necessary. It's, it's, it's always included in education, but uh, Thinking about where your question is going, Vicky, uh, English is is essential for working in 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 the world, especially in a place like in Dubai, for example. Uh, the the official I, I, I have a bad saying because I, I I always say that the official language in Dubai is bad English because everybody speaks bad English. <laughs> But, uh, right, Anita, I don't know in Abu Dhabi, but uh, everybody speaks bad English. And, but, but, you know, the, the learning and, and the listening skills you get here, uh, I remember when I arrived, it was like filling the blanks. People was telling you things and it was like filling the blanks because it was just understanding portions and then your brain starts to, to yeah. Then you get used to accents. Uh, to my Indian boss, I remember. So you had to listen uh, really carefully. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. With with my my Indian boss, uh, on the first week, I was not understanding anything, and and it was you know <laughs> horrible. <laughs> but uh, you know, seriously, English it's 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 essential. Okay, 
Uh, there are five languages uh, in the world. I would say maybe uh, Chinese, uh, Spanish, uh, um, of course, English, and maybe two others uh, in terms of population that you need to, to learn if you can. What I will say to, to the students here is, is, is that, to be very honest, and I will be very straightforward, don't lose your time learning another language than English, okay? People some, sometimes like to learn French because it's a very, uh, it, it sounds very nice, or maybe German or maybe Chinese or, or Arabic or Spanish. That's nice if you have 100% uh, good English, but with 100% means 100%. For example, I don't know how you hear my English, but I'm not satisfied with my English level yet. Uh, so maybe in five years or I don't know, if I feel satisfied with my English, I will start learning another language. But don't lose time learning Arabic or Chinese because it, it will not help you. English, it's, it's, it's uh, the business language of the world, for sure. So you don't feel like you need to learn Arabic? No, no. And, and uh, I would love to. I, I mean... I would love to, but uh, you know, it's not a matter of, uh, of uh, it's a time and energy investment. I would love to learn Arabic, maybe French, and maybe, I don't know, Japanese also is lovely or Korean, but uh, no, no, not, not even Arabic. No, no, no. And, and, and even, even here in Dubai, if, if you start learning Arabic, I don't know, Anita, but uh, maybe, how, how long it can take? Eight years? <laughs> Ten years to learn? Yeah. So what is the point of, of trying? And, and, you know, the Arabs are very respectful people, and they, un and, and they speak English very well, usually, because they start learning uh, at a young age. So even for them, it's not, it's not uh, uh, necessary to, to know Arabic, and it's very difficult. So no, I, I would stick to English and, uh, of course, your mother, your mother uh, language. Of course. You know, I, I thought it was really, um, really good when you said that um, you need to focus on the market trends, what's going on in the market when you're looking for not, not just what you, you dream of doing. And, um, but uh, I would, if you don't mind, could we ask you a couple of questions about your relationship, your marriage, because you're both no. career people. Yeah, no, 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 please. And, and so, first of all, I would like to know, how were you able to quit? You had a good job with a, with a good company, big company. And uh, so what was the motivation behind it? And um, how was your transition? Okay, I would answer that. Uh, exactly with the other answer, mid and long term, don't think in the, in the next three months or six months, thinking your life. I mean, when, when, when Monica, my wife, received the, uh, the invitation, because it was an invitation, to take this international assignment, it was like uh, eight months or so prior to August 2020, okay? So it was in the beginning of, of uh, 2020, okay? The first thing is that, of, of course, it was something for her, but that was also something for, uh, for me, because the international experience and, the, and the, everything we have lived here in, in terms of experiences and, and, and challenges and everything is together, okay? We're very lucky to, to be a, a very solid couple. Uh, of course, we also give ourselves uh, in, you know, space, okay? But, uh, you know, in a couple, a lot of decisions, some, in, a lot of, in a lot of decisions and, and courses of action, somebody needs to give something and somebody needs to, to uh, it's, it's, it's very rare to have always uh, both happy, okay? Mm -hmm. So in this case, I understood that uh, it was necessary for me to quit my job. It was not easy because I also loved my boss. My boss was one of, of the best bosses I ever had. 
Uh, and um, it was very difficult. Uh, one of the reasons that Monica came first in August and then me in December was because I, wa I wanted to finish things first. Uh, give, see, I also helped to, to uh, give uh, coaching to my replacement. Uh, so I, I did a very nice plan to leave the company good because I thought it was the, the, the right thing to do. And actually, since I, since I was going to be uh, unemployed, there was no rush. <laughs> I mean, so, uh, so uh, somebody needs to, to uh, you know, to give more sometimes. I, I don't know if I'm explaining myself, Vicky, yeah. but uh, when I, it, it was not easy to, to quit my, my, my job. It was a, a decision my decision and then it was a complete plan uh, it, you know it was a couple plan what i want to say but also it's it is very important to think in mid and long term okay this adventure were a little uh uh past past the uh, the half i mean we are let's say at 60 percent of the adventure or 70 percent because this will end next year uh, and then what I thought at that point is, well, this is going to be only three years. I will be 51 by that time. Uh, we always can come back to Mexico. Uh, let's give a try. We're, we're, this is, this is the moment. This is when, when life is putting this here, it is your choice. Take it or leave it. And, uh, of course, if we would say no, it would be also good because I would say in my, in my job in Mexico, it, there was no problem also for Monica professionally. So fortunately, this decision, both, both boys was good. We took one, it, it, it means sacrifice in some way and success and challenge and uh, memories in other ways. So um, okay, that uh, was it. Anita's our psychologist. So I'll see if she has another question on that topic. Okay. Uh, basically, I just wanted to check uh, what is a day like for you at work? Well, fortunately, after after COVID, uh, home office rules. So that's very good. I'm at home now. Uh, and also in the digital companies, that's also one thing I've learned. In supply chain, in industrial supply chain, you have to stay every day in the factory, no matter what, long hours. In the digital supply chain, no need. So uh, this job, and that's also part of the honey on this job, but that came later. It's, it's very open schedule. I mean, it's, it's very results oriented. So a day in my life, it all depends, but let's say a week, Anita, it's, it's better to visualize in a week, two or three days I stay home working. Uh, two days we go to the office. Sometimes we have an office and also we have a co-working space. Okay. So if needed, we go there. Uh, in the UAE, you start working, you know, late, like 10 o'clock, but you also finish late, like seven or eight o'clock, especially if you're working in different time zones. But, um, I would say that a week, that, that, that's my schedule, very results oriented, um, very focused. I, I usually try to work on two or three hours uh, lapses and then have a 20 minutes break. And then again, and also dealing with all these digital uh, things like Zoom, like emails, like now you're receiving messages from at least three sources on the WhatsApp on the messenger chat and also maybe on LinkedIn or whatever. So uh, th that's what I would say. It's long hours, but in a very convenient schedule. Wow. And, and as far as I understand, a lot of people is working like that. And I think it's good because when you have to go to the doctor, uh, you know, on, on a Tuesday, you don't need to wait to, to the weekend for do those kind of things. You can, you can move your schedule as needed 
Yes. But sometimes it's nine or 10 o'clock in the night and you're still working and it's not bad. And it's, it, it doesn't mean that you're killing yourself working. It's just because maybe you took the morning to do personal things also necessary in your life. Yes. Yeah. Do, do you look at this job that you have now as a long-term thing, even when you leave, since it's online, even when you leave Dubai? Uh, well, no, I don't want to not on the spot, but... No, 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 not necessarily because, well, now there are weeks, that's a typical week. Now there are weeks that four days were in the office or maybe uh, at the customer side, because we, we see a lot of customers here because it's a sales company in an essence. Oh, okay. So that was a typical, a typical week or some weeks, the five days, Monday, Friday, I'm, I'm working out from home. Oh, so, I, I misunderstood. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that 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 was a typical a typical uh, uh, week, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, some weeks, I'm I'm outside a lot, or you are visiting customers, or we meet in the office because it's necessary. Or sometimes it's just is we have uh, uh, like war rooms meetings, uh, maybe half a day or so. So if we need to do a strategy or or budgeting or whatever. We meet in the office and we stay for a day with no calls, no messages, just focus on what we need to do. Yes. Well, so because of that, do you think this is a long-term job? Well, it won't be in Dubai because we will leave. We know that and the company knows that. But one of the ideas is to bring the company to Mexico. Uh -huh. That might be. So uh, if we have success, um and uh and and we see we're actually right now uh trying to to um to understand and making a strategy to move this to mexico and to latin america and going back to the first or second question you did me that was one of the things i found to make myself useful because at some point my boss told me how do you will see this in mexico mm -hmm. or in the us or maybe in latin america I don't know, but in one week, I will give you an answer. So I, I, I start to do research, you know, talking with people. So we found that it, it might be um, a, good, a, good, uh, a good fit in Mexico. And maybe I would say now something that will be useful for the students. One of the, of the greatest things I've learned in the company I'm working now is that failure is part of the learning process. Okay, so in this company, we are not afraid of fail. Of course, it, it can't be uh, the usual, <laughs> because, but, but if you are failing in the, uh, as a part of the learning and the progress uh, uh, process, it's very good because you learn, you correct, and you apply. Wow. And then if the next time, and the, and the next in the, if the next time you fail, okay, well, learn. What what do we learn? So here, as long as you are working, learning, and of course not doing silly things, yeah. it, it needs to be on a very mature mindset. Failure is part of of the learning process. So talking about Mexico. Well, this is we're we're speaking with people now in Mexico, trying to see if we will if, if there's something possible there. It's our third attempt. Wow. What other strategies or advice do you have for our students and people listening? They're not all students, but okay. A strategy for what? Because specifically, um, pursuing their careers. Okay, what I would say is don't, don't look for a job that will make you happy. That doesn't exist. I already said that. Look for a job that will give you satisfaction. But also don't try to study something that will make you happy. No, a study something that will give you the possibility to do later mid and long-term uh, strategy. Uh, so study bachelor's degree or, or I don't know, something that maybe is not your favorite choice, but will allow you to do later what will really make you 
uh, feel good, feel feel satisfied. Okay, so maybe uh, for example, Monica, my wife, she's also a business administrator. Okay, but she found that uh, her passion was human resources. Well, in order to be in human resources, you need to other oh, business first. So maybe from the 54 assignments or, or uh, subjects you have during your, your bachelor's degree, maybe you will not like half of them or uh, the third of them, who, who cares? Just go through it, learn. And then once you have the, the, you know, the, the bachelor's degree on businesses or, or on a general thing, then focus your life and your job exactly what you want to do, pursuing satisfaction, not happiness. Happiness is for your personal life, okay? All right, let's open it up to our audience for questions. I'm gonna change my view here to- Gal And let me say something, something more. Yes. And to be very honest, at least in Spanish, satisfaction and happiness are synonyms. So what, oh. I, am, what, what I am actually saying is that of course you will be happy in your, in, you need to be happy in your, in your work life, of course. But it's not the same kind of happiness that you find in your personal life. It's different kind of happiness. And it's and that's also good. Yes. Do you feel like you're changing the world or do you feel like you're just uh, but yet it does seem like you're you're instrumental if getting things from here to there and everything does seem to have a, a worldly um, impact. Well, no, 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 by any chance. No, I'm not changing anything. The world is changing me. <laughs> wow. Okay. And actually, I don't think that uh, it's a matter of changing. It's more a matter of evolving. Okay. You need, we, we now need to evolve because a change is something that you can do to, in your life, but Evolving is, is, is more in yourself, is more in your, in your cells, okay? So no, 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 by any chance, I'm not changing the world. The world is changing. <laughs> All right, All right. Uh, questions. We have one, I think, um, in the bo chat box. As you are a Mexican, uh, how did you learn Spanish? Well, Saravia, that's because it's my mother tongue. It's, it's the official language in Mexico. So it's the first language I, I heard. Was, was your school, you said you learned English in school, was it bilingual school or you just had English as a subject? Uh, both, both. Oh, so you learned some subjects in English and some subjects in Spanish. Yes, in, in the very basic school, in, in what we call Mexico primary school, English was a subject, but then in high school and then in, 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 uh, the uni in, in bachelors, uh, both you, English as a subject and also subjects in English, less subjects in English than in Spanish. So I don't know the history of, of, uh, when, of Mexico and Spain, but before Spanish came, were they like Mayan and Aztec languages? Exactly. There were like 50 or 60 different uh, languages, mostly Nahuatl, Maya, and uh, other very ancient languages. And then uh, uh, exactly Spain came in the 15th century uh, around, uh, well, uh, Columbus was by the end of the 14th century. So Spain came on the 15th century and then it's okay. in Mexico, it's almost 600 years speaking Spanish. Wow. wow. We're, some of us that are here tonight are going to the Spanish conversation hub. We're trying to learn some Spanish and I'm trying to okay. brush up on my Span Spanish before I have to go back to the US. Because Spanish is a very important language in the U.S. Now, I, I want to say something. Now that you brought that that big, of course, I said focus on English. Don't, don't, don't. But if you still have time to learn another another language, of course, do it, because languages are beautiful and also opens you doors. But I was I was talking about in 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 job, uh, you know, yeah. in 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 work terms, English rules. But anyway, trying to learn a, a, another language, uh, it's, it's beautiful. Even though if, if, if you don't learn, just, just the effort and, 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 the, and the mental uh, challenge will be good for anyone. 
So keep have your keep having your Spanish lessons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more questions. We have a few minutes left. Manish. Yes, ma'am. Actually, yeah. just uh, I'm not sure. Actually, I was uh, thinking. Actually, I am pursuing my graduation, but uh, actually, I want to become entrepreneur. So, should I pursuing MBA or should I pursuing I am tech. So, a little bit I am confused. This field I should. Okay, so I caught you. You're wanting him to answer about uh, whether you should get an MBA or yes, some other degree, but I didn't catch, maybe Anita caught it. I didn't catch what it is that you want to pursue. Become entrepreneur. 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 Okay. So the, the question one is, he wants to become an entrepreneur, right, Manish? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So you want to know my advice on that? Yes, he does. Uh, okay. And the second question? No, he I, I, what you, Go. Oh, go ahead, Manish. Is it necessary to pursuing MBA or any uh, abroad, abroad degree like MBA or MTech? Okay. Well, Manish, take what I'm going to say, take it with handle with care, okay? Yes. Because uh, okay, how old are you? Uh, right now, around 24 years. How 24. old are you? 24. 24. 24. 24. Okay. Did you finish your, do you have your bachelor's degree now? Yes, right now I'm pursuing fourth year. Final year. Uh, I, I, I couldn't no, understand I did not what complete. we did. I, I oh, did not you did not complete your bachelor's. Why, man? Yes. This is the time pursuing. He's, He's pursuing. in the final year. Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and once you finish your bachelor's degree, you want to, to, uh, to be an entrepreneur, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I think I understand. Okay. Take this, you know, uh, uh, okay. I will say, don't, don't lose your time being an entrepreneur. Finish you first. You need to finish your school. Okay. You will not do anything without the degree. Okay, unfortunately, you need the paper. Okay. Now, if yes. you are 24, Manish, what my advice, without knowing you most than two times that I've seen you here, is that get your degree and start working in a company. Okay. Start, start earning money and start earning experience. Now, if you have enough time, energy, and desire to be an entrepreneur, be it, but working at the same time in a company, at least in the first five or six years. Okay? Yes, sir. I, I, I said like 20 minutes ago or so, failure is part of the learning process, right? But if you go as an entrepreneur now, unless you have one in a million idea like Facebook, or like whatever, you will fail and fail. You will get frustrated. And when you want to start a, a normal job life at, at 30, it is going to be harder than at 25, okay, with no experience. So get your degree, finish your school, because you will need your, your degree in every place in the world. That's the first thing. And then start working on a company, get experience, and then if your dream, your entrepreneurship dream is strong enough to uh, take your nights, your weekends, your free time, do it at the same time when you are working, at least for the first five or six years. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Good advice. Uh, any last questions before we say our thank yous and bid farewell? Anybody else? They are celebrating the independence. Uh, <laughs> um, well, Shravya is a uh, BCom student, actually, B, a Bachelor of Commerce student. Okay. I'm glad she was here tonight. Um, all right. Well, Juan, we want to thank you so much from the bottoms of our hearts. And um, 
I just Likewise. appreciate, I mean, he, he is the one who also did a lecture for me on LinkedIn and the importance of LinkedIn. And LinkedIn has been a great tool for Anita and I also. Um, but I just, uh, I just so appreciate how you uh, support India and uh, the Language Center, which is, you know, a grassroots sort of thing. And uh, we just appreciate your support, your time, your energy, your encouragement. And um, we thank you very much. Shravya wrote also a wonderful session. My pleasure and my honor. Thank you so much, Piki and Anita. Yes, All right. thank you so much. So loved hearing from you. And I think so much you uh, have shared. Um, all of which is going to be so useful to each one of us, definitely.